it's a travel day and so we're getting started with our checklist and one of the things we're going to be doing today is checking out our new tire pressure monitoring system or TPMS. So the question comes up every now and then on the internet about whether or not you should get a tire pressure monitoring system or TPMS and some people will say absolutely and there'll be some people that will say it's a complete waste of time. I am in the former group and say absolutely. Now it's important to remember a tire pressure monitoring system is not going to help you with a catastrophic rapid disassembly of your tires. All of a sudden you're going to get a reading of zero a few seconds after it happens and you're going to get the subsequent damage to your rig. Now where it's of good use is just constantly monitoring and becoming familiar with your tires. Like I say I've had 12 sets of Goodyear's including two sets of Goodyear marathons and have never had a tire failure, never had a low pressure situation, never had any dry rot. So it's part of becoming one with your tires. And when that thing's up on the dash, I am constantly glancing at it, especially now that it cycles. The tire monitor didn't cycle. The new ones probably do, but my old one didn't. And I'm always looking to see what are my pressures? What are my temperatures? And the big thing that I'm always, always, always looking for is not the overall values but if there's one that's different it's that anomaly that's what you're looking for you know if all of a sudden you know Cindy was like wow the temperatures are up over 90 is that okay well it was because every single one of them was up over 90 if one of them was at 90 and the rest were at 60 Houston we've got a problem so I am absolutely of in the camp if nothing else it brings you together with your tires so that you know what's happening you know it at all time and yeah, in that case of a slow leak, you can catch it in advance. So I'm a big fan. Here's what I purchased. I purchased the TST 507 Series 4 4 cap sensor. And I did not get the flow through sensor um, because I did not want to go to the metal stems, as I said. And these little caps don't require the metal stems. Um, as you can see here, it lists currently for $371. When I bought it, it was listed at $329. I got the gray screen versus the color screen just simply because I don't need that and I'm not going to pay the extra for that. Um, so at $329 I also got a 20% discount by using a code that the YouTubers that the RV odd couple, uh, they reviewed this system, came to $65.80. So what I paid was $263.20. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the setup just a little bit here. All right, let's first start with the tires that I'm monitoring. I'm using Goodyear Endurance tires. I'm a big fan of Goodyear. I've had 12 tires, three sets, 18 years, 76,000 miles, and I've never had an issue, blowout, or anything. And I inflate them to 65 PSI. I could just see the comments being typed as we speak. Whoa, you can't do that. That's the maximum pressure. You need to go by Goodyear's inflation chart. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that inflation chart and do some math. If you look at my trailer, my trailer weighs about 4,660 pounds, and I know that because I've weighed it recently. So if you take the four tires, each one has a loading of about 1,165 pounds. Well, if you take Goodyear's inflation chart, that comes out to 23.9 PSI. And if there's anyone out there who thinks I should be running 23.9 PSI, leave a comment below. I'll be interested in what your rationale is. For the low and high temperature alarms, I set a limit of 20% of the nominal tire pressure. This in the case of the low pressure yielded 52 PSI and in the high pressure instance 78 PSI. And I chose 20% basically because I think I'd still have a good tire at 52 PSI, but it allows for the variation in temperature and pressure which as we said in this video, you gain or lose about 2 PSI for every 10 degrees in temperature change. For the temperature, I did it at 153 degrees for no other reason other than that's what they recommended. And here's a helpful tip. Every now and then when you have a tire pressure monitoring system, go ahead and unscrew one of the uh, um, sensors while you've got your monitor just to test to make sure it's operating correctly. So let's go ahead and take one of our sensors off and see what happens. This would simulate a complete blowout. And yep, as you can see, low pressure, fast leak, and it's giving me the alarm. So I'd say my system is working. All right, you can see where I've mounted the repeater. Let's see if that's a good place or not. Just a quick update on the repeater. 
Um, recently we returned from Island Pond, Vermont. That'll be a video a couple a week or two from now. Uh, down here to our home. And because it was just basically country roads, not a whole lot of highway or high speed, high temperature travel, I decided to run a test and I did not connect the repeater on the way home to see how that would work uh, just out of curiosity. And certainly there was no loss of signal. A monitor up front was totally monitoring the temperature and pressures the entire time. So with my particular trailer, uh, which is a 22 footer being pulled by an F-150, it looks like the need for a repeater is not really that necessary. And I had heard that on the internet. Some of the people had actually said, hey, test it out before you install it. I have it on here anyway. Um, but certainly if you have a 45 foot fifth wheel being pulled by an F-650 long bed with a Merlin V-12 engine, uh, you probably might need the repeater. But in my case, not really necessary. Let's head off to Westcott Beach. Well, we are finally out of state for the first time since I think March. Well, with the exception of one doctor's appointment. Right, exactly. This is the first time we've been outside the state of Vermont. So we're heading off to Westcott Beach State Park, which is on the shores of Lake Ontario in New York. It's one of the... Vermont's got this weird thing that they... Every week they update this map, which you can see here. And it shows well, which counties are allowed to be traveled to by Vermonters without having to quarantine. And this is travel. leisure Ooh, travel. This is this flash my lights. How's our tire meter or our tire pressure monitoring system working? It's looking pretty good. I'm reading 93 degrees generally, 91 degrees, and it looks like the pressure has been holding steady. Yep, so we kind of like how it cycles. The old tire binder that I had. We had to, to cycle. Sleep. We had to cycle through by pushing a button. Yeah, this one here just constantly cycles, which is really cool. Looks like it's giving accurate information. And it's a beautiful day for a tow through the Mohawk Valley of New York right now. Exactly. So we just arrived at our campground and it looks like things got a little shaken up. And the rugs are on the floor. Cushions down there. Don't you love it when your paper towel roll does that? But nothing seriously damaged, just a little shook up. All right, you can kind of see an outline of our campsite. Pretty big campsite, I think. Easy to back into. Um, only about a third of the sites have electric. And everybody else, a lot of tenters. And you can see right in front of Cindy there, Lake Ontario. We'll get a closer look here in just a second. So even even though there's a state park, I would say that the, this definitely has like a, a feel of like a public or a private campground. Like back there, you can kind of see they've got like a playground. Right. And Th the things get pretty tight around here. A lot of tenters. And Lake Ontario. So it's it, it's... It's not as peaceful as I would say, but we, this place we is... We ended up on a peaceful end though. Right, th but they say that this park is extremely popular. And I was talking to one guy today and he even said that next year is like entirely sold out. So wow. I don't know how that's gonna go, but let's go check out the beach. Let's go check out Lake Ontario. All right, so we're here on the beach, which is really convenient for campers. It's a little bit breezier out here. Yes. So there's but, a big difference if you're parked or camping closer to the uh, lake than Yeah, there's a consistent breeze. Um, but you see a very nice beach here with Lake Ontario behind us. And this was the beach where we spent the last two nights. Looking um, for the comet. And we found it. We had some gorgeous views. We had our telescope and binoculars right. of uh, Neowise. Absolutely gorgeous. I wasn't able to get a picture of it because my camera thwarted me. Well, we'll still try. I'm trying. It wouldn't let me take a picture. I had an aperture of f5.6. ISO of 250 and a 15 second shutter time and it would not it got really angry at me. <laughs> I think it was just hazy. No. Oh, well, I don't know. The camera got mad at me. For some reason it didn't like that. If any of you people are camera experts, what was wrong with that setup? Well, we'll see. All right, we can get some at Island Pond. Let's continue looking at the beach. Okay, here's a good item to have in your kit. As you can see, the nose is really low because we're sloping back big time. And this is about probably as low as I've ever had it ever. And a good piece of kit to have is this nice solid base plate. This one in particular is sold by Airstream, but I'm sure there are 
other brands and stuff like that. And what it does is it allows you to stabilize your jack when you can't use your foot because it's too low. Now what do you have underneath that? I just put a couple um, yellow blocks. Just uh, sometimes I do that. Uh, the more you can get your trailer stable, the better. And um, It probably helps raise it up a little bit too, huh? Yeah. And so that was just kind of a good thing to have. Nice tip. All right. Well, we finished just finished uploading episode 87 at a Starbucks. And we are here at Sackett Harbor, New York. And you can kind of see behind me there's the... Some cannons. Sackett Mansion, Carronade, a cannon. And I guess this was a uh, some type of battle or something happened during the War of 1812. We're going to explore some more. Yeah. As, as well as having lunch. Yeah, we're trying to have lunch at the uh, 1812 brewing company and in the meantime we're going to tour Sackett's Harbor. You can yeah. see it's kind of <clears throat> cool little harbor. See some coasties out there. Let's check things out. It's always cool learning stuff that I never would have expected. It says here that during the War of 1812 Sackett's Harbor was the most active naval base in the United States. I might have thought Lake Erie um, with uh, I think Oliver Hazard Perry there but no, it was Sackett's Harbor. And also the largest warship for the United States Navy during the War of 1812 was the Frigate Superior. I might have guessed, say, the Constitution, Old Ironsides, but um, no, that's what they say. Learning all kinds of stuff here. All right, see, what did we order here? We ordered a pork banh mi, which is pork belly. It has a coleslaw and a sort of a a oldie dressing to it. Mmm, that is gonna be good. It's outside dining. So how's it taste? The pork belly is a little chewy. It's not as tender, but it's got like a nice crisp outside. So it's just a little chewy, but overall the flavor has some nice spices and the aioli makes the dressing on the uh, salad very nice. And of course I have to have my little happy camper mask. Gotta have it. <laughs> I'm smiling right now, you can't tell. That's the very definition of COVID chic. In your mask. And your purse match. And your purse mask match. That's COVID chic right there. All right, so good morning. It is a travel day. It's about 5.45. We got our coffee from Don Mar RV. That's how you know you pack your dishes well when you still have the same coffee mug the dealer gave you 18 years ago. So um, we're going to go ahead and get hitched up off to Island Pond, Vermont. Should be about six hours or so. Good day today. In next week's episode of Love Subbing, we travel to Vermont to Brighton State Park and have one of our more challenging back ends ever. Plus, we try out our new battery monitor while boondocking. So, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up and click the subscribe if you haven't already done so. And leave a comment below if you think a TPMS is a good idea. We come out with RV and Airstream related content every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.